Little Blue Riding Hood by Javel, Vidya, John, and Julie. Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Little Blue Riding Hood. Little Blue Riding Hood was walking up to her mother's beach cap. Little Blue Riding Hood's mother was asking her to get to bring hot dogs to her grandfather. The mother gave her the package of hot dogs. The Big Blue Whale by Emily, Jalen, and Mia. Honey, be careful. Don't eat the food. And watch out for killer whales. Blah, 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 whatever. Bye, Mom. What is your grandma's house? In the Twilight Zone. I have a shortcut for you. Over there. Okay. Hmm. The food looks real good. Mmm. Yummy. Meanwhile. Hmm. Where is Big Blue? I'm going to check on Big Blue. Where is he? Oh, hi, big blue. Ah! Wait, you have lips? Yum! Meanwhile... Aww! She's not here. My tummy hurts. Blech. Why did you eat me? Sorry. Oh, you are in big trouble, though. Ooh, snack. Ah, come back here. No, no, Mom, I need her. Guys, I'm here. Oh, no, I'm in big trouble. What happened? Granny got eaten by a killer whale. Oh, honey. That's the circle of life. Let's go home. The, the end. end. Cat's Growth by Grant, <coughs> Riley, Benji. Once upon a time, there were three cats who were looking for food. They came, ac they came across a pond. They saw a flopper and tried to get him. Cat tried first because he was the biggest and strongest. I'm coming to get you, flopper. Cat jumped in the water. Flopper turned around and slapped Cat. Ah! Don't worry, Cat. I will get flopper said Joey. Joey was scared, but pretty strong. I'm coming for you, Flopper. Joey jumped right in the water, but when he did, Flopper turned and slapped him too. Ah! I will try my best to get Flopper, said Grizz. Grizz was the tiniest and weakest. Grizz jumped into the water, and when the Flopper turned and tried to slap him, Grizz jumped over him. What did you do to Flopper? The Three Basties by Quinn, Amira, and Sienna. The Three Basties were living in their own houses in LA. There were no problems. 
third best he was worried for her friends. You might want a security them, she warned. There's a robber on the loose. Day passes. The robber breaks into the first bestie's house. Oh no, says the first bestie. She rushes to the second bestie's house. The robber, the robbers run into the second bestie's house. The robber breaks into the second bestie's house. Now the second, now the two besties run to the third house. The robber tries to break into the third house, but the security alarm goes off. <clears throat> the police came to the house. Not again, says the police officer. They take the robber to jail. The third bestie says, "See, you should have got a secure. You should have got a security alarms. They all live happily ever after. Until next time." The end. The purple. Potato by Lon Maris and Kira. Oh, Penny, I was gonna call from cousin that he is running out of potatoes, so can you deliver some potatoes to, get to his house? Bye, Mom. Penny called from a room in a reluctant voice. Penny popped in her shoes and headed out to the potato field. On her way to Patrick's house, she bumped into the unthinkable. Squawk! Oh, hey, little girl. Squawk said in a deep voice. Where do you think you're going? I'm going to my cousin's house to deliver some potato seeds. Penny told the squawk. Not so fast. I'll help you deliver your stuff on one condition. Only if you tell me your name. Squawk said. Penny looked at Squawk in his eyes and gave him a confused look. Before she said anything, she thought of what her mother always told her. Stranger danger, stranger danger. Well, give him and it won't be that bad, right? Well, not if you don't tell me your name first. Well, I'm, well my name is Squark, so tell me yours. Well, I'm Penny. Nice to meet you. As the two new friends walked through the potato patches, there was a lot of silence between them. So Squawk tried to fix it. So, what do you like to do at home? I like to, I like to play with friends and then hang out with my mom. Squawk nodded his head and the silence continued. After walking for hours, they were finally near Patrick's field, which is when Squawk smiled because he knew his plan was falling right into place. First, he saw the cotton hair, like her hair looks nice. Oh, I like her shoes. Your hair looks nice. And I like your shoes. Then he helped her when she tripped over a rock. Then he threw it. She put all her trust in a squawk. She would never see what's boarding right at her. As he knew Patrick's house, the squawk started his last part of his plan, the attack. Squawk, why did you stop? Hey, Penny, it's been fun hanging with you. The squawk stopped to tell her. Penny looked stumped. But it's time to go. Go where? Down my stomach slide. The squawk rolled, <sighs> opening his mouth as wide as possible. Walking by when the crime was waiting to happen was Carly the cow. She went as the squawk about to chomp up Penny, so she ran to them and kicked him with her back legs. Ow! 
The squawk said as he flew over the field and hit his head on Patrick's doorbell. OMG, Penny, are you okay? Thank God I was here. How do I know your name? I know everyone on the names. I'm Carly, by the way. Carly the cow. Nice to meet you. Penny waved, waved to hand with a friendly hello. Hello. And then she saw Patrick come out of his house, and she ran towards him. Patrick was her, um, her in a weirded out look. What happened? You don't want to know. Penny said, hang him the basket of seeds. The end. The, oh. the Duck Family by Zachary, Alex, and Asher. The Duck Family is walking on the path. Mysteriously, a fox starts following them. Dad Duck says, I think someone, I think someone is following us. Fox starts chasing them. Baby duck yells, ah! They run into a forest. Dad duck says, I think we lost him. They, they are walking through the forest now. A alligator comes out of the bushes. Baby duck says, run! The fox and alligator start chasing them. Alligator yells, get them. They run to a forest. Alligator and fox said, We're going to get you. The duck, Dad Duck said, You can't catch us. We're the duck family. They keep walking on the path. They come up to a snake. Dad Duck says, Look, a snake. Snake says, I think, I think, no, I can help you. Run away. Dad Duck says, Yes, please. Okay, follow me, said Snake. They walk, they're walking on the path. Snake says in their head, Okay, now since they're not looking, I'm going to eat them. They, Snake ate Mom. Dad yells, Ah, he ate Mom. Snake said, And I'm going to eat you. He, Snake ate Dad. Baby Duck yells, He ate Dad. Snake ate Baby Duck. Snakes, say, snake said they were good. Thank you, Thank for, you for watching. watching. Johnny Carrot, there lived a rabbit, and little Timmy, who lived in the forest. He lived with his mother, sister, and brother. He was a nice, friendly rabbit. Everyone wanted him to get smarter, and they felt like they could improve his work. His mother could would walk him to school, and she would also walk with his sister. Little Timmy was the best at everything he did, but math. He tr he was tired of everyone being so mean to him, so he thought he he would he could do better. So we went to the forest to practice his times tables. Four times two is eight. Three times six is 18. And 12 times six is 70, said Timmy. Grr, it was 72. I'm totally gonna bomb the test tomorrow. He, he, used, he used to do this every day, but, but he thought it was a waste of his time. I should just stop doing this. It's not gonna pay off. Then the next day there was a test. He was, he was, he was trying his hardest when the school day was over. He went to look at his grades. He, he saw, he totally bombed the test. Then the school bully came over and said this. Why, why are you not trying short little Timmy? Even I got better days than you, loser. He looked at the test and saw that it was fractions. Well, I didn't know it was going to be fractions. He was so mad that he went, he, that he bombed the test. 
He just went home and kept punching his pillow in his room. I knew practicing his time tables was not going to work. He yelled at his pillow. Then he went to sleep thinking that the test must have been changed from time tables to fractions. Then he thought he was going to fail the next mid mod with the thought was with the thought of that he fell asleep. He kept thinking about the mid mod. He was trying his best but still it was not enough. When he woke up the next morning he went to school and went to the area where the school bullies go. He asked, mind if I join you? Let's do this. He went to the forest. He had a flint and steel and he lit the tree on fire. Then the fire spread. He felt a certain pain in, in his heart that he was doing the wrong thing. Then he went to, and ran with a water bucket. He was so mad that he let himself be bad and this is why he never became mad again. That's how he learned his lesson not to be mad even though he is not good enough at math.